Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that this remarkably sedate look compared to what I normally produce is at one of my beautiful 4F babies' request. They wanted a more subtle, neutral, wearable look. Although, you know, my girls are. And boys, I'll, I'll, I'll wear neons to the supermarket and electric boogaloo blue to the post office. I don't care. But now this has been produced with one of the Kaleidos palettes. Now, I tried. I can't remember what number the pink one is. I think the pink one's the. pink one, the third one? Or is that the green one? Hang on, let me have a look. Oh. I actually tied it up. I've actually got a system, folks. Can you believe that? Me, got a system. I'll let her eventually. It scared me actually because it made me. Alright, oh, okay, so green is the first one. So pink must be the third one then. So I'd already used the, the Astro Pink. Um, and then I ordered the green one, which I haven't used yet. And then I picked up this one from Depop. This is the Cyber Bronze Futurism 2. I do also have the neon one. I don't have the turquoise one yet. I, uh, I still need to try and find that one. But if you want to see exactly how well, or not, this particular palette performs and how I achieved this brown smoky eye. Who am I? Darlings, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right. I got asked, I don't know if I'm going to say this in the intro, because obviously I haven't recorded it yet, so I'm going to say it now. I've, I've been asked whether I can do a few more neutral type looks. Um, and because I liked the first Kaleidos palette that I've got, Someone was selling some of the others. I, I bought the green one direct from Kaleidos. Ouch. Because I got whacked with another 15 quid on top for import fees. Marvellous. Um, well, the import fees were three quid. The rest of it was a handling fee. Yeah. This one I picked up from Depop. I've also managed to pick up the neon one from Depop. This is Cyber Bronze and looks like uh, this. So I thought I'd give this one a go today. I've heard very good things about that red shimmer as well. So, But because I'd got two, I wanted the third one, then the neon one came up. So now I just need to try and find the turquoise one. And then I've got all five. And I need to try and find some of the highlighters because I'm not going to get stung again with the import fees. Right, this is a teaching channel. Partly because my chronic pain means I can't blend very quickly, but mainly because when I first started learning how to do makeup and watching tutorials, I found it very difficult to follow these quick 20 minute full face tutorials because so much was sped up or cut out. It was really difficult to follow. So I always said, if ever I started a channel, it would be a teaching channel. It would be the kind of channel that if you've never picked up a brush before, you can sit down, you can follow my tutorial, and you're going to have a chance at the end of it of producing something very similar to what I've got on my face. If that's too slow for you, YouTube has a speed widget. Please use it. Right. Faces washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I've had a few... I had a breakout here... I had a breakout. I had a visitor here who not wanted, but he's now going. I've got a red splotch here, which doesn't feel like it's 
I think it's just my skin being my skin to be honest um, and I've got some leftover bits here for some dermal planing I had done where they managed to cut me yes marvellous great fantastic um, but apart from that my skin's okay so I didn't my pores didn't look too bad so I didn't put a pore filler on or anything so I just went straight in with this one people that regular viewers will know I use this all the time this is my antiperspirant primer it has got primer qualities um, if you're going to use that one my advice is to put your other primers on first let them dry make that the last primer you put on because if you put that on first other primers tend to pill up over the top of it more details on where I get that in the description box along with recommended brushes that I use and all the discount codes that I've got right let's get you zoomed in now as you can see I come in really tight so you can actually see what's going on none of these zoom you in and you can still see their head and their shoulders and their cleavage <laughs> there we go. Um, as usual I've got my Chrome and Pebble white primer on love this, I haven't used anything else since I got it haven't touched my MAC because I've had soft ochre paint pot or my Tarte Shape Tape um, the reasons that I love this, it goes on dry so you can blend on it straight away without having to set it so you don't lose any colour impact and even on my deep set eyes, look, it doesn't crease the only time it creases is if I put too much on and the way around that is I just keep a fluffy brush specifically for my primer and I just swirl it in the pot and then just blend it all out that simple now I've just mentioned that I've got deep set eyes. A lot of people with eyes like mine mistakenly think or are mistakenly told they have hooded lids. I'm going to talk you through the difference and then give you a workaround for each type of lid so that whatever type you have, you'll be able to follow the tutorial. Any tutorial. Now, when I relax my brows and look forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see much just here because this lid's a little bit swollen at the moment because of my fibro. But you can still see it. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to your lash line, part or all of that mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can make sure I'm still on screen and in focus. If I cover the visible mobile lid close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid space that tucks away and if I do the same with the static lid you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lid get so you get transference of colour onto the upper lid, if you're cutting your crease you can't just cut the socket, you've got to cut onto the upper lid. And with glitters, even with glitter glue, you get a bare patch right through the middle. So, the workarounds. If you have hooded lids, so if you can't see your mobile lid, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to ridiculously reduce the space between your new crease and your brow. So use smaller blending brushes and if necessary go right up to the brows with the colour. I normally only go right up to the brows if I'm doing an editorial look but if you're really stuck on real estate here you may have to go right up to the brows. If however you've got deep set eyes like I have, all we have to do when we're blending a deeper colour through our crease is to stop, sit back, relax our brows and just check we've brought it up high enough that you can see it when our eyes are open. So, there you go. Two very different ways um, of working around. So it's important to know which type of eye that you have got. Right, I am going to start off with one of my Royal and Lang Nickel Chic Pro Crease Brushes, which is a big old fluffy round brush. And I'm going to start off by going into Droid, which is the 
lightest of the browns. And I'm just going to, I'm holding the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on my lid as possible. I'm just going to very lightly blend this across. You can see I'm going in circular movements when I'm going towards the nose this way. A bit of a bounce in the middle and then reverse the direction to come back out again. Now I'm deliberately not putting much on the lid because I want to, uh, much on the brush rather, because I want to be able to build the colour up to the shade that I want rather than suddenly putting warmth load of colour on because I remember from the first one of these, these palettes are pigmented. So it's always best to start off light. It's much easier to add colour than it is to try and blend out colour that's gone on too thickly. It's a really nice butterscotch colour. Kind of makes me want butterscotch angel delight. Mm. Okay. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side. Now the reason that I go in circles like this is I'm 45 <clears throat> and I've lost 14 stone, which is 196 pounds. For those of you in America who don't know what the stone is, or have only heard of it referred to, there's 14 pounds to a stone. Um, so the skin on my eyelids moves, but I know 20 year olds who genetically have quite relaxed eyelids. But by doing this, you're very gently moving the skin around so that you don't get any white streaks. Now, I do get them here because of these super deep creases. Um, I'll show you that later. If it, sometimes the, the, this circular movement will work. Other times, I do have to stretch the lid out slightly. And with shimmers on the mobile lid, I absolutely have to stretch the lid out. Otherwise the shimmers build up in that crease and just um, flake down my face through the day. And I'm just sitting back and checking that the shapes are the same. Because your eyes are not symmetrical. No matter what James Charles might like you to think with all of his photoshopping that he does. Or face tuning. I promise you I don't use any filters at all. Apart from very obvious Snapchat filters. But if I post those on Instagram or Twitter or wherever, I always make sure that there are photos preceding it without any filters. Because I want you to be able to achieve what you see. I'm just going to clean this brush off. I've got a clean washcloth here that I clean the brush off with. I used to use a colour switch but I found that quite harsh on the bristles, especially with um, natural hair bristles. These are synthetic but with natural hair bristles the colour switch is far too harsh on them. So a clean washcloth or a microfiber cloth, much much better idea. Right, I'm going to go into Y2K now, which is this mid-toned brown. Same brush. This one kicks up a lot more in pan. So I'm just tapping back off into the pan and I can pick up that kick up when I need to get a bit more colour. And I'm just going to run this just the same thing, circular movements but just lower down the eye. So it's very gently blending with that butterscotch shade that we've already got laid down. And it's just bringing depth in. I'm just going to clean that brush, get a little bit more of that butterscotch back, I think. If you find that a darker colour does overpower a lighter one, you can always go back in again with a little bit more of the lighter one, which is what I'm doing now. 
There we go. Now pick up the kick up from that pan and do the same thing on this side. This eye is much easier to demonstrate because obviously I can close it. So if I close the other eye, I can rely on muscle memory to do blending and stuff, but I can't guarantee I'll be on screen or even in focus, even with my autofocus. So, just giving this a good old buff. I do struggle sometimes here and here on both eyes. I get dry patches so I can either get it clinging like it's doing there or I can get it patchy where it won't want to lay down so if it clings I just clean the brush off and gently buff over without anything on the brush at all and that fixes the situation if you get the issue that it's gone patchy you do your blending and then you pick up a little bit more of the pigment and just tap it on where you've lost the colour. Okay? But I'm going in with a, deep, a deeper colour anyway, so I'm really not fussed about that being a little bit patchy. Right, to clean that brush off, I'm going to change brushes now. I'm going to grab one of the Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro eyeshadow brushes. Still loosely packed, but it's an oval rather than a circular one, so I get a lot more control about it. Basically, however wide the head of your brush is, that's how far it's going to blend the colour out. So I'm going to go into this one here called Carbon. And just a really nice, neutral brown. It hasn't first two are quite warm browns but this is quite a neutral brown so I'm going to do little tiny swipes first and then leading into the big old windscreen wiper swipe I do little swipes first to try and minimise fallout and I can check see what relax my brows you can see it just above there so that's fine so now without adding any more colour just going to blend along that line just to soften the edges up and I'm going to grab a little bit more and just pop it on the outer corner there I like that so same thing this side I always get more fallout with this eye because this lid is much looser where it got pulled around when I was five years old um, I didn't really notice any difference in both eyes until I hit about 42, 43 I suppose and that's when I really started to notice the difference so it took nearly 40 years for the damage to show so if you're in your 20s stop pulling your bloody eyes out to your e-rolls because I promise you by the time you hit your 40s you're going to regret it And just buffing along that line, soften the edges up, and then pick up a little bit more pigment and just pop it on the outer third of the lid. For precision, I've come closer up but I'm still not putting much pressure on at all. Okay, so clean that brush off. And I've got a floofy brush. 
wash. Put it off for the excess. And fall out. And then I get this is actually a I know it looks dirty, but it's actually it's charcoal micellar water. This is actually a clean cotton wad. I'm just going to use that just to tighten up. I much prefer doing this to putting tape down because if the tape is sticky enough that you're not going to get any powder going under the edge of it and it's going to pull your skin when you're taking it back off again. That's just that's just common sense, isn't it, really? Right. I am going to grab... Um, I did buy both the Jeffrey brush sets from Morphe. Admittedly, the second lot of brushes were better than the first. Especially the natural haired ones. Whoa. Um, but as well as the, the sets, they had some additional brushes that weren't in the set. And this is one of them. This is one of the lip brushes. And it's uh, JS24. But when you've got tiny lids like me, it's great for getting down into that corner. And I am going to use my Wet n Wild Primer Water to wet the brush after I've applied the pigment. Now if you wanted to do this for work I would have gone in just with that first colour all the way up and then gone in with the darker colour, the mid-tone one, through the crease. But this is a more natural going out look, so it's brown smoky eye, so I'm going to go into quantum and I'm going to Pack the pigment onto both sides of this brush and then give it a bit of a spray. Lovely. Always dry your ferrule off, which is this bit, because it stops moisture going down there and loosening the bristles. Because if the glue melts, your brush melts. Now, I'm going to look into a little mirror down here so that I can make sure I'm still on screen for you. I'm going to pop this onto the inner corner. And drag it about a third of the way across the eye. Roughly to the point that your pupil is... I like that. Clean and dry the brush off before going back in. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill the pigment. Maybe not immediately. If you do it often enough, trust me, you'll wreck it. So I do have to pull this lid out. Can you see what I mean about the tiger striping just there? Let me just grab that brush and give it a bit of an extra buff just to make a little bit of pigment actually. Right, as I was saying, uh, I do have to hold this lid out when I'm doing this, because otherwise, as I explained, it all fills up in those deep creases and then ends up cascading down my face through the day, which is just horrible. So if you do have to do this, do not stretch it out to your ear roll, just literally stretch it out as far as you need to. And don't hold it out for any longer than you have to. Okay? 
This is such a pretty colour. Really shiny too. But I've got to try that red. I've heard so many people gush about the red, called infrared. Right, as soon as you touch this, you do get hard pan. But you can still pick up product. So it's obviously one of these ones that's got a lot of oils in it. For blendability and shine. Right, again using my little mirror to do this eye. Nice. Reminds me of some of the ones that are blood sugar actually. I can see why people rave about this. And I'm just going to drag the lighter colour across onto the red just to blend the two together. That gives a really nice pow, doesn't it? I like that. Right. Clean and dry the brush. Just to prove the point, the brush is clean. I'm going to go over exactly the same area that I went over before, which is hard panned. And yet, I've still managed to pick up pigment. I was proving that to myself as much as I was proving it to you. Right. Same thing with this eye. That is just such a beautiful colour. It really is a Stunning scarlet. And then again, just drag the lighter shade across onto the red just to blend the two together. Okay, I am really liking how this is turning out. Right, my darlings, I am going to pause you while I pop some foundation on and do something with my hair towel because it's currently in the process of falling off my head. Um, the, for you my darlings there will be absolutely no delay at all, you'll see me instantly. I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Okay, I am back. Right. Decided to do natural brows today. As I'm doing more natural look. She said heaven's plastered bright red all over her eyes. Okay, I'm going to go with, <laughs> with this brush. And I'm going to go back into carbon, which is that deep, deep brown. And I'm going to connect it up to the outside here. And just run it along. Underneath my lower lash line. I love, 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 love this kind of brush for doing this. You can get really precise with your placement and it's so easy to get underneath your bottom lashes as well. I'm flinching because of the number of times I've poked myself in the eye that side because obviously I'm relying on muscle memory and um, a viewfinder that's quite a way off when you haven't got your contact lens in. <clears throat> Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, but I love it because it's chunky, but it's, it's flat topped. And I'm going to go into that butterscotch colour, Droid. And I'm going to use that just to soften and buff out the lower lash line. I don't know how many people are shocked that I've actually done a brown smoky eye. I very rarely use browns. 
I just got to the colour that I use the least. But, I really like how this look has turned out. Surprising myself here, folks. Don't worry, I'm still going to be doing colourful stuff. This is me, remember. Right, I'm going to go in with this brush from... Why do they do this? It's a pearlised thing, and then they put like gold writing on it. Uh, Vital Radiance Concealer Brush. And I'm going to go into Plasma, which is that silver. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that. On the inner corner. Wow. And then drag it along and just blend it in with the colour under the eye there. That's pretty. Mm. This is like molten mercury. It's like quicksilver, it really is. Wow. Alright, that is a bloody stunning shade. Starting to make me wish I'd used that one instead of the red. Never mind. Right, let's close that up and I will grab... I think I'll go for the Juvia's Place Tribe Highlighter, Volume 3, which looks like that. That was a gift from my friend Kay. And I'll run that along just up under the brow line there. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck some more of this highlighter over various points of my face, put some mascara on, choose a lipstick, do something with my hair, and I'll be right back. And there we go. Obviously, same highlighter. I used Cracked Open a Fresh Tube of Catrice a Glamondol Waterproof Volume Mascara. This is a bang on dupe for Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. I believe Bad Girl Bang by Benefit now have a waterproof version, but this is still cheaper. Uh, the lipstick is Coloured Rain's Safari Rain in shade Meishi Rain, which was a present from my darling hubby, along with the Safari Rain palette. And obviously the face was... Kaleidos Futurism 2 Cyber Bronze. So, I used my coconut Gerard all day today, slay all day to set it with. Hair's still wet, but uh, I'll dry by the time I go out. It's quite fine. So, there we go, lovelies. You wanted a more wearable, natural, non wacky look from me. So that is what you have got. What do you think? I must admit, I like it more than I thought I was going to. So, if you're one of my 4F babies, please, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people, left, right and centre. Uh, it's very frustrating for smaller creators. Um, it, it really is. It's 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 a nightmare to be quite honest. There's times that you look at your numbers and you think, why am I bothering doing this? And then you look at your numbers and you think, because there's that many people that are subscribed to me and want to watch. So um, to try and 
be one of the people that are not kicked off. Try and interact with the channel as much as you can. Watch as many as you can. Like, dislike, comment, whatever. Just try and interact with the channel as much as you can in the hopes that you don't get deleted out. But if this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, if you came this way because you were told that I normally do colourful looks, I usually do. I have loads of videos you can watch uh, to prove just that point. Uh, but on this occasion, it is actually a slightly more wearable look. I say wearable. Any look is wearable for me. You know, I'll go out on a wet Wednesday in, in, in November with luminous neon feathers everywhere. But not everyone's quite as mad as me. I think once you hit 40 you think, ah, sod it, I do what I like, I don't care anymore. At least that's what happened with me. The older I get, the less I care what people think. If I like my makeup, that's cool. Nobody else does. Mm, whatever. It's my art, it's just makeup. You wash it off at the end of the day. But if you have enjoyed this, and if you made it this far through my weird rambling, I'm guessing you must have liked it just a little bit. It'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button and then jumping through however many hoops YouTube want you to jump through now to get notifications because long gone are the days you could just like a channel and get told when they upload new content. Apparently liking a channel doesn't mean you want to watch them anymore. Right. All that remains for me to say as ever my darlings is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.